I said I want to be a dictator for one day. You know why I wanted to be a dictator? Look, they're telling us what the plan is. The definition of fascism is that the people that are in charge of your life have absolutely no responsibility and no accountability to answer any questions for you. So before you talk about communist China or Cuba, try and fix that's here. That's what we're mad about, that there's no accountability. In a highly requested video, Immortal Technique takes it to the power structure in the U.S. and warned us eons ago. Hi everyone, this is Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene and I just want to make an announcement and I'm, I'm sorry I'm overwhelmed with emotion because this is the best news of our lifetime. The Supreme Court has voted to overturn abortion rights as lunatics like Marjorie Taylor Greene, who have violated her own holy scripture by allegedly cheating on her husband and divorcing him, she would cheer women having less rights. You couldn't have the war in Iraq or a, a, a budget of world conquest proportions and revoke the right to abortion. We were talking about this in 2003. You can go back and see Revolutionary Volume 2. And it's not because I'm a prophet. It's not because I'm, I'm, I'm some kind of spiritual guru that stares into a crystal wall. It's because this was the naked truth that was written on the wall and people didn't want to see it. They don't want to see proximity to their politics be fascism. Technique, through his rhymes, has been calling his shot that the country was headed in this direction for years now. It's probably why you should listen to his songs. All hell broke loose. Rampant, evil, grabbing and grasping, vicious, backstabbing. They made life hell on earth with their envy, wanton killing. I don't know what a wanton killing is. I'm gonna have to look that one up. But it sounds interesting. And I don't think I wanna be a part of it. Speaking of another sinner. And I think that what's sad about it is that now um, right wingers have adopted in this little switchover, have adopted the, the premise that they care about um, subversive politics, that they're counterculture. Right. All of a sudden I'm bucking the system. No, you're the system. And now you're bucking the system as yourself. You know, you're trying to overthrow the system. You're a revolutionary. No, you're not. You're a pasty person in a suit that is presenting the ideas of rich people to a platform that's digestible for the plebeian public. And that's what your job is. We, we, we don't get news in this country. We have the opinions of rich people that are translated by human teleprompters to the masses in the hopes that they'll take the bait and actually start thinking that way. Technique gives this perspective that many share when hearing the likes of MTG, Bobert, and others. Don't blame Wall Street. Don't blame the big banks. If you don't have a job and you are not rich, blame yourself. When folks were out in the streets during the Occupy movement. People that say, you know what, I want concrete solutions. I want people held accountable for what they did wrong. I want governments to realize that they're not just going to get a free pass for their horrific record of human rights, even if you're supported by America, because we have deals to exploit your natural resources. I, I think that that's what people are genuinely concerned with here. So was Technique. As somebody who has helped plan coup d'etat, yeah. not here, but you know, other places, uh, it takes a lot of work. And on the topic of mainstream media outlets using war hawks like John Bolton. We impetuously jumped into a situation that we didn't have an exit strategy for. There were so many things that were wrong with going. It seemed like, you know, uh, uh, people were just wanting to draw the sword and lead the cavalry in. And it, it was part of like Bush's living in a Western POV fantasy. I, I, I was very confused about well, that, who decided to, who were the architects and these geniuses still have a job coming on some, some television shows that, that the people who decided all this and their opinions actually considered valid. They're like, oh my God, oh, that's the dude that was completely wrong about Iraq and probably helped to cause the death of thousands of American lives. And people are just talking to him like he's a regular person. No, he's, he's responsible for, for people dying. He's a fraud. He's spot on again. We have a country where to assimilate, you have to speak English. We have to have assimilation. This is a country where we speak English, not Spanish. Ridiculous points by the former president. We've normalized who's a terrorist and who's a freedom fighter 
based on what America's hegemonic view of some region is. So listen, for every person that thinks you're telling the truth, especially in this political environment in the United States where people on two sides of the duopoly, which is itself a pathetic spectrum, don't even have a shared history <laughs> of the United States anymore. And amen to this. Please watch the full interview with the great Abby Martin on the Empire Files' YouTube channel. Our culture has changed over the last, you know, 30 or 40 years, and, 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 and the, there's been an attack on those, on, on those things in particular. And I just think that kids are exposed to all kinds of horrible stuff nowadays, too. I look back and I think about the, you know, the horrible stuff that they hear when they listen to rap music, the video games that they watch from a really early age. An old trope technique is just tired of hearing of. I want people to, to, to explore different avenues because if I just rhymed about running around a jungle with an AK-47 uh, in that kind of cliche revolutionary way, then people would get tired after one or two songs. I made a song about the drug trade called Peruvian Coke where everyone plays a different part of how drugs get to this country. The corrupt official in Latin America, the, some CIA agent, the drug dealer here that takes the money, the, the cop that gets paid overtime to steal people's drugs. And I, I mean, we try to make it as interesting as, as humanly possible. Because this is what they fear education through a fine art form. For instance, hip hop. Hip hop has done more damage to black and brown people than, than racism in the last 10 years. Sadly, this is what they still think of the genre that remains the top dog in the industry. Here's a toast to the dead. If you don't drink, smoke to the head. For the freedom fighters killed by the feds. For those who died hard in the streets, soaking in red and die slow asleep in a dream, choking in bed. Here's a toast to the dead for my enemies that are gone. I'm not a coward, so celebrate and that would be wrong. I pray to God that your soul will come back again so I can see you in the next life and finish it then. A toast to the dead for criminals burning in hell. I wonder how many presidents are burning as well. Emperors, popes, senators, generals, amputees, feeling lucky until they see the vegetables a toast to the dead for those who are forgotten written out of history by the corrupted and rotten black saints whitewashed during la reconquista thousands of indio spaniards used to conquer the incas a moment of silence i need a moment of violence like the 19th century caribbean islands long live those who came before that paved the way for me the warriors and scientists that came before slavery and if that last lyric was predictable take that clairvoyance and apply it to life in the physical presumptuous half-hearted homunculus self-destruction is the power without knowing what the fuck is. Immortal Technique was asked by Amy Goodman of Democracy Now! if Occupy inspired a rhyme. He said he performed this song prior to and it still lives on. You are oversimplifying and bringing a message to people, younger people as I pointed out, who admire you that is a message that is not true. I reiterate, this is what they think of hip hop. Every single song isn't about like a, a political agenda per se. Like uh, on the last free album I had called The Martyr. I did a song called Natural Beauty and it was just simply about the way that um, magazines and media target women's insecurity, you know? And the whole message of the song was to say, hey listen, if you don't think you're beautiful and you don't think you're worth something, then who are you gonna end up settling for in life? You know what I mean? You know, r remember Sambo caricature characteristics? Now who's got the collagen under their lipstick? Implanted Arabic hips, surgical sickness, a bipolar society that claims to be righteous, spray painting artificial melanin trying to be like us? I mean, at some point, we have to talk about different things. You have to give music dimension. Even when I work with kids and they just want to rhyme about the streets and, and drug dealing and stuff, I say, listen, if you're in entertainment, just make it interesting for people. Tell me what it's like to sell drugs to a pregnant woman. Tell me what it's like to grow up in a household that you now sell the same drugs that you saw your parents grow up using. Because most people that I know that were involved in a drug game had parents that were addicted to drugs. Tell me that story. Tell me what it's like to lose a shipment and have them boys after you for them $60,000 you owe. Tell me a story that's interesting. Make the, make the listener want to participate in some way, shape, or form because that's the true soul of entertainment. You're making people think. You're not just providing some cookie cutter example of the way music's supposed to be where we pretend to be a caricature of ourselves for the amusement of America. You know, our, our black and Latino people are not one dimensional. You know, Middle Eastern people are not one dimensional. Even white Anglo-Saxon American people are not one dimensional. They have a history too, so why are we only only painting us in this particular light. And lastly, before we romanticize the idea of revolution, we have to talk about 
the fact of what most people think about. They think of the violent overthrow of a state. And what we're talking about with revolution is first a mental revolution. You know, first confronting the mythology of America. You know, no, we didn't conquer the Native American people in glory and, 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 a, and a series of you know, epic wars. No, we slowly edged them out of their land. We lied to them. We committed a genocide. And unfortunately, we've now decided to change that because it doesn't suit history. The same way Tea Partiers want to paint slave owners in, in, a, in a more positive light, as if that's gonna contribute to the bettering of America. That's gonna improve race relations. Like, you don't improve something by lying about what the cause of the problem was. You improve something by fully accepting the criticism and differentiating it from all the things that are just thrown into the universe and saying, well, we could improve on that. Yes, it was supposed to be, you know, God created all men equal. It was supposed to be, you know, these truths are self-evident that, you know, but at the same time, we abandon that in the principles of, of the, the birth of this nation. And I think that if we confront those first and we move past that and kids say, hey, you know, I'm sorry, Columbus was not a hero. You know, he was a slave master and a murderer. You know, if we say to ourselves, yes, you know, the founding fathers were great men, but some of them owned slaves and that was a part of the hypocrisy of America. You mean to tell me you really believed that black people were three-fifths of a man, or was that your justification for slavery? Because if you had just been honest, like the Caliphate and the Roman Empire, and said, no, we took you because you lost the war. That's why you're in chains. But no, it was the cowardice and the inability to just say, no, we need an excuse for this, which left the lingering legacy of racism. In other words, if we go back and we address the mythology, it helps us to open those wounds that need to be cleaned that can still save America. And if it doesn't, then there will be no political sovereignty because we won't have any economic sovereignty because people won't be intelligent enough to do for themselves because people won't be self-motivated. They won't be taking personal responsibility for what they're doing. It all starts here and this is the last resort. I always tell kids, don't, don't glorify this. War is not something to be glorified. It's something that destroys people. Even the winners of war come home feeling ripped apart because of what they've had to do. You can tell them that they're heroes, but some of them will always carry the pain of having to take another human being's life because a real man doesn't take glory in that. He understands that that was a part of his duty and service and that a soldier is only a piece of a warrior and that a warrior is only a piece of a man and that coming back like that, really, we should pay a lot more attention to the veterans as well. And I just want to close with saying that. All right, now before we get into it, I want to give a special shout out to Chris Hogue, I'm sorry if I said that incorrectly, 7823, who said, please cover Immortal Technique and Dead Prez. My friend, I appreciate the viewer recommendation. In turn, if you can, please do become a channel member at youtube.com slash TYT Sports and or go to tyt.com slash join to support me. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. It was hard putting this together because there are so many gems that this dude drops, whether in rhymes, which of course we can't show because of music copyright, but then also outside of, and I highly recommend a few interviews. Bootleg Kev had him on, really solid podcast with video, of course, these all have video. Um, the Empire Files, I think also did a fantastic job when it came to this interview. An old one that actually the Young Turks did with a younger Jink as well. Check that out. Democracy Now! had some good stuff. Um, and then there was uh, one more that I really, really liked that he did. And it was, oh, there's two more actually. Eon English had a really long, thorough, detailed, in-depth chat. So go follow them. And Amanda Seals had a really good sit down with Immortal Technique. Continuously, it was hard to pick because for time purposes, we have to. Because what this man says is indicative of the times no matter when he said it. And that tells me something, which is we are not progressing. We are going backward because he's warning about these things a year, two years, five, 10, 15 years ago, and yet it's still relevant. It should not be relevant. This country is uh, has the highest GDP, and yet 
we continue to spend our money unwisely. And there are so many different systems inside of the system that will not allow itself to crack. Technique puts this in his rhymes. He puts it in his interviews. For the record, I am open to having the discussion with him because I think he has a, a brilliant mind, unlike Donald Trump, who says China respects the brain. And I would welcome the opportunity because I think not only would we chop it up real well, but this man's rhymes are just quality. Just real quality. As I sign off, let me just say this. I appreciate you dealing with me because I am under the weather. So uh, much love to you guys for sticking around and hearing this terrible voice that I have. Have a great day. Talk to you soon.